Image podcast listeners, it is I, Golden J. So happy to be coming to you. I hope you guys have been enjoying the vintage Golden Image radio episodes that we've been putting out in the odd weeks of uh, when me and the boys are not reviewing and just going out and having a good time. But I wanted to try something new. And so I got this idea to do interesting people doing interesting things and there's nobody more interesting in my mind than my buddy Aaron Budinsky or <laughs> aka a dog which is what I'm going to call him for the rest of the way out because I always butcher his last name <laughs> That's all right, man. <laughs> it's, uh, it's actually Bud Zinsky you know some some people call it Bujinski but uh, you no know, my, my, my dad's middle name was Jerome it's actually Jerome in Polish but I always, I always tell people I'm Polish from the waist up. You know what I mean? So yeah. <laughs> From the waist up, boys and girls. <laughs> Just remember that. It's very important. Hey, dog, my brother. So good to see you. It has actually been way too long. Yeah. Uh, the last time that I think that I actually spoke to you and in person was the Frozen Chosen meeting up at um, uh, Wilson. Wow, that has been a long time. Yeah, yeah. Think about so, that for yeah. a minute. We're still we're still doing tournaments uh, for Mishawaka Parks now. It's 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 so cool how Frozen Chosen became just you know me and Tim drunk, uh, <laughs> wanting to have uh, you know more than eighteen holes during the winter because I mean you know who doesn't want to disc golf in nut deep snow? I mean that. Like, yeah, yeah, you? yeah. That that's that's on that's on my priority list. Uh, you know, I have enough trouble. I have enough trouble losing disc in in the regular part of spring and in fall when there's yeah. no foliage. Let alone try to <laughs> dig them out of uh, dig them out of snow banks and 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 just uh, whatever that may work Man, out. At. I, I got pics. If you check out uh, Frozen Chosen DGC on Facebook, man, I have pics of us in blizzard conditions throwing disc like idiots, man. But, you know, I mean, uh, th this is back when Tim was, I don't know, 20 beers a night. So it was uh, it's a little bit of different dynamic now. We're a little older and wiser. You know, Tim Tim uh, gave up all the alcohol and all that, man. He's, he's completely sober. So good well, for good him. For him. Yeah. Yeah. Like four years or something like that, man. But yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's doing well. And, and the cool part about you know, you know, I can't stress enough. If you want something done, do it, you know, and uh, and that's that goes for, you know, being in a band, be, you know, whatever you want to do. If you see something that needs to be done, just do it, you know, and people will follow. And now Frozen Chosen, I mean, it's still us, but it's become something more, you know, like there's been, uh, you know, all the local discers come around and Wilson went from being a 18 a whole course to now being a 24 hole, uh, you know, with new pads poured and uh uh, you know, a, a bunch of guys coming out and helping and clearing trees and making it something more, you know, so right on, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not hard to get the ball rolling really when it comes right. down to, it. I mean, shoot, look at you, dude, you know, rocking and rolling for God, how, how many years now? 20 something now? <laughs> Jeez, I don't know, man, you know, to be, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, for those that are, that are tuning into this for the, you know, um, I am recording a bunch of these, uh, a dog is going to be my first, these probably won't yeah. come out until April, um, but I just, uh, as of tomorrow, I'm going to celebrate my 50th birthday. Yay. And, Happy birthday, and, brother. Thank you, my man. Yeah. And, and so I've been playing in rock and rolling since about what, 14, uh, you know, there's been some, there's been some lags in between there, but, uh, you know, we took some time off and just, you know, kind of collected myself, but man, I, I love playing music and I love, I love doing I forgot how much I missed this until I got back into it. Yeah, you know? man. You guys are like the Von Trapp family, though. It's really nice when you have, you know, your entire family doing something yes. like this, right? You know, like, you know, whether they're whether they're playing or, or you know, hanging out or supporting you. I mean, that's that's super cool. 
Oh, that's amazing. Uh, and speaking of when I got back into doing the podcasting, I, I, I emailed a dog and I said, Hey, I want to use your voice in my intro. So everybody who listens to golden image and you hear golden image, that is this guy right <laughs> here. And, uh, and, uh, I took that piece and I put it in my intro and I emailed him and you know, obviously he's like, that sounds awesome, dude. That's great. And then you did a giant write up on Facebook and you don't even know how much that means to me, man. It, it, I, I bet I read that thing a hundred times, just going back over <laughs> it. It meant so much to me. Um, and it meant, cool. it meant that, you know, when that time, when we did that, and you came on board, you know, you gave your time, you and Tim both gave your time to do that, you know, to do a show. Um, you know, I was grateful because it just added to what we were doing. But it, I guess I never really looked at it from your side and, you know, and what you said about, you know, wanting that opportunity to get back on the air from from where you were and, you know, coming off of uh, terrestrial radio and, and all yeah. that. So, so I was, you know, I was a dog at one three nine the bear from seven to midnight, and uh, I did that for like five years. And there, there was a year where I was number one at nights, number one in my demographic. But I mean, who was I up against, man? Like, like a Delilah and uh, you know some other uh, phone <laughs> one radio show from uh, Alice Cooper or something like that, man. So it right. really wasn't hard to be number one. But we were playing such great music at the time, and uh, you know, getting on stage and seeing bands like. Um, you know, Godsmack and uh, Seven Dust and, um, you know, just Trapped and, and and all these awesome bands that came through the uh, early 2000s and late 90s and uh, and, and just, just kicking ass, taking names. Hailstorm, you know. Right. And um, uh, shoot, I was uh, up on stage. I introduced Static X. And so apparently what you're not supposed to do is say, all right, everybody, Static X and then run off the thing because they need time to get up there before the lights come on <laughs> so, so the trick is to say in a moment they'll be here you know and then hype them up and then and they get off the stage but as i'm running off the stage i see this tiny dude with this big ass hair holding this guitar and i'm like man this guitar tech has awesome hair it's wayne <laughs> <laughs> No, I almost ran into Wayne Static. I mean, the dude was like uh, four feet tall, man. So it was not. Uh, yeah, because but yeah, you probably man, towered over him, didn't you? What are you, you like? Know, what yeah. six, well, I'm three? Six foot four now? I'm like three hundred pounds. You know what I mean? So, I mean, <laughs> you know, the the biggest question I get from any celebrity I meet is, uh, you know, Tommy Chong. Uh, you know, any anybody, even uh, uh, God Chad Musgrave. You know, uh, he's like, "Why wow, you play football?" Yes, yes, I played football. <laughs> <laughs> of course i but, did you know but i was also in theater god damn it and i was art club president so you know come on man you got to be diverse my brother you got to be diverse but, but imagine seeing all those bands hanging out backstage with them like uh you know i was an only child a marine you know and, and coming off the radio seven to midnight monday through friday there's at least you know three hundred thousand people agreeing with me on a nightly basis so right to have all that and, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, I did a few things that, you know, I kind of messed it up. And that was just the way it is when you're, you know, when you're around the bottom, and everybody's like, hey, Doug, let's get you a shot. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, things things tend to go downhill. And I'm, I'm sure that happens for everybody unless they keep a cool head or they have that support behind them, you know. But, um, yeah, so so that's pretty much where I was. And I was still, uh, you know, I was DJing weddings. And I was doing like trivia and, and uh, you know, karaoke and that kind of a thing. But it was really cool to come back on and do a show for you uh especially with my best friend tim right and i mean here we are in our basement it was the a dog and t-bone show on like a wednesday right so my my ex-wife loved that <laughs> <laughs> it was the but, yeah. the tuesday night takedown it was the tuesday night takedown that's yep. right man it was tuesday nights and what we tried to do was uh we tried to get the the heaviest local bands in Right, and I mean, there would be there are dudes that would come down to my basement on the west side of South Bend, over off Gladstone, in this tiny, tiny ass basement, and yep. bring like half their kit and play a song or two sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it was great, and uh, you know, I mean, they could, you know, there's no, they brought like I don't know, not even like a bass. They might have brought a snare, and that's pretty much it, or something. Right. You know? Yep. But uh, and it was and it was great, and, and we told jokes, and we had such a great time, and. Uh, and it was uh, it was it was great getting back into the swing of it and uh, and being you know having that uh, it's it's like doing doing something forever riding a bike or whatever and then getting back on it like man I don't remember how to do this you know and getting that rhythm in and 
um, you know, uh, uh, ending before the start of a song and, and, and pulling out of a song and talking about background. And, and it was, uh, it's just, it's fun to do. I love doing it. I love talking. I mean, you can tell right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, well, no, when you were like, hey, you want to come do a show? It's like, absolutely, man. And uh, we were doing what? Pirate radio at that time, I believe. Yes. And uh, yep. people are like, where the hell are you? And I'm like, pirate radio. It's like, okay, you got to log on to this and then log on to that. And then put in your code. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Jump through this hoop. Go under this net. You know, crawl over this barrier. Yeah. It was, it, you know, the the funny thing was, as I was thinking about that the other day, uh, and I've talked about this in some of the other Golden Image podcasts, is that we were working on a zero budget. We had no money. Yeah. Uh, you know, basically trying to hold computer systems together so that we could do that. And pirate radio was like one of the places that you could get on for dirt cheap. And, um, you know, it could, it could stream 24 seven. And we did that for a while, as long as the yeah. computer system stayed up and was shoving it out. Um, and then, you know, Josh Toro came in and he's like, Hey, you've heard of this thing called Ustream," And I'm like, uh, no, but let's check it out. And then we got into Ustream, So we were doing both. And then, Pirate radio just got too complicated, you know. It, it was just yeah. too too much for people to get in and out of. Ustream was so much easier. You could strap a link and people could go right there and and then they got to watch us. So they got to watch the bands that we had in there. You know, for you guys, the one camera that showed pretty much your entire room. Yeah. I had two different ones depending on who was if we it was just us or whether we had a band. But um, you know, I, I like to think that uh if we had had the technology we have today doing like what we are doing right now man we'd have been leaps and bounds over top of absolutely absolutely man it was yeah it's, it's so much easier now to do anything oh, you know yeah. i mean what we're doing we're zooming on the phone you know yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> a couple cameras uh you know a 30 dollar usb mic and here we are <laughs> oh, yeah. and, you know, and, you know, and, and anything you want to use i mean you know, back in the day, you had to get Adobe. You know, you had to get uh, you had to get some kind of video editor that was extremely high price. And now you can yep. get an app on your phone or laptop or whatever, and it's easy peasy. You know? so yes, that's, that's super cool. Yeah, it's amazing. So we moved on from we moved on from Golden Image Radio. Um, you had to change up in your personal life. There was a lot of stuff going on with you at, at that point. Um, Things look like now they've really flattened out and, and everything just looks amazing. Um, you want to touch on any of that, you know? Uh, uh, well, you know, I, uh, so yeah. So, you know, uh, like I said, 300,000 people agreeing with me, uh, drunk every Tuesday night. <laughs> 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 I, I, you know, I mean, uh, I think, uh, I think the ex is wanting a family and I just wasn't projecting a good dad material at that time. Right on. Um, what's the funny part is, is like you never you're never ready for anything. I mean, that's that's kind of the deal. You know, you just you jump in. OK, from from my perspective, you jump in both feet and you go for it. You know what right. I mean? There's, there's yep. I mean, uh, sure, you can you can put some money in savings and sure you can write out a five year plan. But honestly, when it comes down to it, you know, until you're holding a child in your hands, you have no idea how you can act, really. Oh, you know? yeah. Yep. And uh, and it was um, it was one of those things where yeah, I think that's what she was looking for. And so, um, you know, we we part of our separate ways and you know I'm, so man i'm i'm rough i'm like i don't know what to do man I, you know and, and my, my cousin's there we're putting up this tub surround in my shitty house on gladstone and uh i said uh i said man i don't know what to do and he's like did you change your facebook status i said no and he said go do that so i go downstairs and i do that and i come back upstairs and i said uh so how long do you think this tub surround is going to take to put up and he's like oh about an hour it's like five o'clock I said, cool, I got a date at seven. <laughs> <laughs> so it was absolutely wonderful, man. Like, you know, I went out, I sang karaoke and I smiled and I danced and and it was so cool. And uh, you know, and after about a month or two of that, Tim's like, Hey, why don't you give Jessica a call? Um, Jessica was running uh, what was she doing? She was out at uh between the buns in Osceola. And right Jessica, on. you know, if you know, she used to be the lead singer for Blammo. Like she, she was part, you know, part of that when the band came together. So, you know, the last time she really sang with them, she was up on stage pregnant nine months with our son, um, you know, rocking and rolling up there. So he's got that background. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's a funny part is like, I had a class with her at IUSB and we celebrated, uh, you know, taking our finals um, about a week before I ended up getting married, which is so weird. And I'm like, man, if, if I'd have known back then, I, you know, I would have married the right girl in the beginning and everything would have been super cool, man. But, right. Um, 
But you know, anyways, he's like, yeah, why don't you give her a call? And I gave her a call and it's like, like I think it's February 2nd of every year. I pull up the I am uh, history, you know, and I take a picture and send it to her. And that's you know, pretty much me saying, hey, I'm divorced. Want to get a beer? Yeah. Like, <laughs> here we are 12 years later, you know? Nice. We have, we have a wonderful uh, uh, going on nine here. Her birthday's on 420. So, yeah, my daughter's birthday's on 420. Well, there you go. There you go. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, I have a 19 year old son who's following his dad's footsteps as far as service goes. He's joining the Air Force. Uh, oh, that's amazing. Day. Yeah. And he's uh man, he's, he's freaking, you know, the best part of being uh, a parent is when you're able to get to that point to say to yourself, thank God it didn't fuck this up. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like I said, uh, never ready, man. I mean, even now, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, dude. You know, oh, that, yeah, you try to do the best you can. And it's, and that's, and that's awesome. But yeah, so, so that's what I've been doing. And then, uh, I have Michiana party service that uh, my dad, when he retired, we started that up and started doing weddings. And I try to keep it nice and affordable for, for, uh, for new client, uh, you know, new clients, new people getting married. You know I mean? Yeah. They don't spend three to five grand for a DJ. That's ridiculous. Dude. Oh yeah. You know, it's, I mean, yeah, everybody's going to remember the DJ and the music and the dancing, but I mean, you know, up lights don't need to cost extra. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So, so I do that now, and I also MC and run the music for the Walk End Alzheimer's. Um, anything that comes out of the Marine Corps League, any, any type of thing they have, the Marine Riders of Michiana, I do their blowout parties and their uh, their annual uh, rides, and uh, also uh, Marine Riders Southwest Michigan. I do um, Reeds Across America, where uh, the local uh, RWB and VFW they get together and put wreaths on graves of uh, fallen you know, soldiers. Right. Um, right. Super cool, and then uh, also stop twenty two. I do their annual ride. It's uh, it's to prevent suicide, it's suicide awareness type of thing. So nice. When I was a uh, you know when I was a, a active member at the Marine Corps League, I'm still a member, just not an active member. I was uh, uh, there's a guy uh, who's a commandant named Jason, and uh, man, Jason was absolutely wonderful, and uh, I you know having a great life, kicking ass, bringing stuff together, and something didn't click, man. He uh, he ended up seeing some action. And uh, I guess uh, that's just kind of the way it goes. So, you know, we we all kind of you know jumped in on you know this whole suicide prevention thing and trying to help people even out. Um, if you've never heard of it, there's a place, uh, there's a group called Team RWB, and you can you can see them on Facebook. They're all over the joint. Um, and what they do is they get veterans out of the house. So uh, so you know they 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 set up beach volleyball. You know, just show up. You know, you're you're paid for. It. Um, they do get together so they purchase appetizers, uh, bowling weekends, and you know they also do like daily runs, calisthenics, and you know if you want to go to the gym three, you know three times, they have like a, a, a yoga or something like that. You know what I mean? So they're all they're always doing something. They're, I think now they have this thing where they're uh, they're running the the colors, uh, you know the the flag, United States of America flag from coast to coast, and so they're part of that. You know, like running a certain amount of miles or whatever right right so, um yeah so it's 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 super cool to, to be you know i went from i went from focusing on myself you know when i was at the bear to you know trying to outreach you know and and, and be better at uh helping out the community and, and other folks so right yeah yeah that sounds uh that sounds amazing it sounds like to get them out of the house they get them active and help you know take their mind so you're not just sitting around thinking about all the things that have gone yeah. on in the past all just the, get... uh, and you know and you're not alone that's that's one of the biggest yeah. things and it's like uh and it's you know there's a few marines there's airmen there's army you know navy there and we all we all kid each other you know when we get together right. but it's it's great to like yeah and, and your families are invited and all that kind of thing so right it's uh it's great i mean we have we've gone from a handful of folks to you know just a, a bunch of people and uh, it's really nice. Same, man, same thing with the Marine Riders. The Marine Riders started out with like seven dudes or whatever. Now they're up to like, I don't know, 30 to 50, something like that. Nice. Um, yeah. So, but like I said, you just got, if you see something, just go do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't be, don't be afraid to jump in. Uh, yeah. We're back. We'll backtrack a little bit here, but don't be afraid to jump in with both feet because it always goes back to what I, what I've said for a long time. Um, don't ever put off going on vacation because the more you try to plan it and 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 not do it you'll never get it done so just yeah. go do it just get out yeah. there enjoy life at this you point know? you know if you don't then you're just sitting around staring at a tv or your cell phone these days but exactly, get out there, enjoy. man we are a flash in the pan 
and yeah. nothing is too hard and 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 nothing nothing is uh, is too bad you know what i mean like it's it it's, it is what you make of it and uh instead of sitting back worrying about it, that that's the problem that's why i'm not a collector because if i collect anything it's going to be ruined <laughs> because <laughs> i'm going to use it right now man <laughs> you're not a mitten box kind of guy is that what you're driving no, not, man somebody was telling me that they have a, they have like two 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 cars one's an audi and they haven't taken the audi out much and i'd be like man that thing would be smoking tires <laughs> <laughs> i've gotten into a lot of that lately where uh uh my buddy phil who's also a big chiefs fan is is like uh he's a collector oh, hey, congratulations man that two times four years, man, you gotta love it. Go Chiefs! Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but ahead, he, he likes that. Uh, he likes that. Uh, you know, mitten box stuff. You know, he likes to collect stuff and then just let it set and see what it's going to be worth in ten years or whatever. And I got some stuff like that, but man, yeah, I, I want to play with all of it. You know, I do. Yeah. I want to. You know, I want to put the autograph helmet on my head and walk around the house in my underwear. That's just, these are the things that I want to do. You know, that's what I do with my canned goods. I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, you know, I have a weapon. I'll just steal someone else's food when it comes down to it. <laughs> 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 the basement is not full of water and canned goods everybody he's done eight of them all it's all good I drink, I, no it's all it's all there might be one can of ravioli <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I do have questions when it comes to that because when uh, covid hit man we bought a bunch of canned goods just to make sure we had some stuff floating around in case in case of and all that shit expired on me before I even ate it. And I'm like, wait a minute. I thought this was supposed to be good forever. <laughs> right? Oh, man. Dude. Yeah, they don't make them like they used to. You, you know why things were good forever back when we were young? It's because grandma wouldn't tell you when she canned it. She just ended up <laughs> opening it up, and there it was, whether it was good or bad. And you're like, this kind of tastes funny, but oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Grandma said it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tell me, yeah. tell me more about Michiana Party Services. I know we okay. uh, uh, did the ambulance ever happen? No, the ambulance never happened. Yeah, that was the thing. My my dad and I had an argument on whether we should get an ambulance or uh, just a van, and we ended up just getting a van because uh, you know he was worried about you know the upkeep on the ambulance and whether it be you know just uh, just broken down by the time we got a used one or whatever. And and I, you know I can see his point, but I. I totally wanted to have a big blacked out ambulance, you know, tinted in windows and like uh, all the lights on it, different colors. The cool thing about that is that if you do have a vehicle like that, as long as you have it parked on the side of the road with the lights, you can have the lights flashing no matter what color they are. Right, right. But you yeah. can't drive it down the road with the lights flashing. Exactly. That's <laughs> that's the thing. And I'm like, oh, cool, man. So, you know, I mean, they have they have purple light gels and and, and green and orange and uh, you know all kinds of different colors. I was like, that would be cool to party you know have a party van over there and i had all like all kinds of ideas for it and whatnot but no um it never happened and uh it's one of those things that gosh you know if it did well both my kids would probably be in college you know <laughs> <laughs> or doing something you know uh you know where i have some some money saved up uh to do that kind of thing but no yeah um and so so basically the big van ended up breaking down uh squirrels used it to hide their nuts in uh-huh uh, yep like a lot of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah so yeah so that ended up ended up going to the junkyard but uh um so now i basically out of my nice minivan here i pack everything and i got a bose system so it's very compact and it has a lot of sound coming out of it and um a bose l1 model 2 i don't know if anybody aficionados are out there uh no but it's cool it's like a it's like a stack of 24 speakers that are all aligned in a 180 degree uh, field. So no matter, no matter where I point it, I'm going to get 180 degrees of sound and it's nice. It's clear up to like 200, 300 feet. So Beautiful. I'll do uh, for the city of Mishawaka. They have me do the, uh, the slide, the, the city or slide the hill a couple yeah. of times. And I've also done their, uh, their glow night uh, tubing and, uh, uh, a couple of their uh, other things like Easter or whatever the heck, or, you know, if they have a Halloween thing going on. So it's, it's fun, man. I, I really, I really enjoy uh, Steve Gleisner. He's the uh, uh, park director over there at uh, uh, George Wilson. And uh -huh. he does most of the events for like youth events and that kind of a thing. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's fun. I'm, I'm still doing weddings. You know, I, I, I don't necessarily, advertise a lot because i have a straight job or whatever you want to call it right um 
Monday through Friday, I, I fix uh, auto test machines for blood work, which, you know, we were super busy during COVID. So, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you know, were. <laughs> there ain't nobody busier than you during COVID except that girl with the Q-tip. You're right. And that's, <laughs> you know, and that's uh, the, the cool part about that. So I'm, I'm sorry, I got to go off on a tangent, man. The cool You're fine. Part about my job now is I'm still serving. You know what I mean? So I had that background of the military and then, you know, uh, using Michiana party service, I, I do pro bono work for everybody. Right. Um, in fact, um, I'm doing a, a charity thing for, uh, what the heck is it called? The Isaac Walton league, uh, every okay, year, yeah. some kind of trivia or whatever. And so they're doing that to raise money for the league and for their youth programs, like, you know, teaching kids how to fish and archery and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm, I'm doing that, but it's, uh, it's cool because the job I have now doing that, I, I do it in uh, children's hospital labs as well. So it's not just me repairing a machine for the man. You know what I mean? It's right. the work that I do helps doctors diagnose patients, which is super cool. So, I mean, yes, I'm getting a paycheck and I'm just doing my job, but I get to have that, you know, to, to be a part of that, which is nice. So. Right. And you're doing it with, you're doing it for kids. Yeah, that makes it yeah. even better. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, so, so I work from anywhere from Duluth to Pittsburgh and everywhere in between. Um, really? And I drive, I drive because at six foot four, 320 pound me on a plane. Nope. <laughs> you know, eight years Marine Corps and they still want to feel up my crotch to see if I'm carrying a bomb. Like, come yeah. on, man. <laughs> I should get an automatic pass, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. I'm yeah. good, man. You've already checked me four times in the last week. Come on. Right. I mean, honestly, if you do want to check my butthole, that's fine. But you got to tell my wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe she wants to come along. Watch. You yeah, just never yeah, know. You never know. But film it or something. <laughs> um, so the Isaac Walton thing that uh, the, the we'll talk about George Wilson again here in a second. But the Isaac Walton thing, is that the one that do you do a bunch of that stuff? But that one that's up there um, uh, north of uh, Roseland, is that, the, is that the one you're talking about? Yeah, it's off of like not Auten Road, but one of those roads up there, Darden or something. Yeah, where you go down that single that single road and across that really skinny bridge. They have uh, uh, man, it is beautiful country back there, dude. And they have like, like I said, archery back there. I mean, you can see the targets off in the distance. And uh a lot of weddings there, um, you know, receptions and whatnot. Um, because it's it, like I said, it's it's beautiful country. So you know, great, great places for uh photography and all that stuff too. But I was just there a few months ago and DJ'd a wedding. Hey, there you go. So you know what I'm talking about. Man. I know, that's why when you brought that up, I'm like, oh, I was just there. Uh, I can't remember exactly when I was there, some September, October, somewhere in there. But um, yeah, what a beautiful place. You walk down the back stairs and the creek runs through there where all the yeah. archery stuff's at. I mean, it's just an amazing yeah. piece of property. And there's uh, uh, his name is his name's Dick. I can't remember his last name, but uh, Dick was uh, he, he puts those things together, the youth leagues things together. And then he also runs the fireworks for Mishawaka when they do their firework thing. So it's, wow. it's fun, like a small world, how, you know, how small it is. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you're you're... DJing there, I'm DJ in there. He's laying out the fireworks, for Mishawaka. I'm doing sound <laughs> for him, you know, like that's, that's me. And I like that. And that's, you know, when people tell you, they're like, Oh, I got to get out of this town. Got to get out of this town. It's like, you know, I mean, sure. If you want to freaking, if you want to do something national and sell stuff and, you know, you, you know, that that's what you're looking for. Yeah, that's fine. But we have everything here. Honestly, oh, yeah. man. You, can, you can ski snowboard in the winter. You know, there's there's beaches in the summer, all kinds of lakes, kayaking, freaking, you know, uh, uh, the dog parks, you know, whatever you want. I mean, every restaurant down on Grape Road, you know, or if not, you can go to any other place. I don't know, an, an hour away. You know what I mean? There's there's oh, there's yeah. something to do at least an hour away in every direction. And in Chicago is what? An hour and a half. No big deal. Right. You know? So it's like. I mean, and people, people, people keep wanting to get out of here. And I'm like, dude, we are the crossroads of America, man. All the crime. I mean, we're the highest crime in South Bend. Right. <laughs> <laughs> How can you go wrong with that? <laughs> no, man, this is, this is my part of the trash. Like, okay, man, trash, I guess. Weirdo. I, um, <laughs> I will agree with, I will agree with you 100%. I don't know that if you are uh, a local band who's looking for a record contract, that this is the place to be, but yeah, we have everything else to satisfy your needs. You know, whether you want, uh, you know, a top rated uh, college football team with Notre Dame, there you, uh, go. you know, whether you want a great uh, cake in a can from evil check or, you, uh, <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We've got it. It's here. It's there. 
we're we're not for a lack of anything and yeah you you can fill up your tank and drive halfway uh, empty half that tank and you've got a million things to do whether you're going to south haven or chicago or uh hell i mean you put four hours on go to frankenmuth you know all these sure. things that are just so close um, and that's uh you know and, and also uh the the amount of music in this area is oh, yeah. pretty insane dude you know i mean you can't i can't sneeze in a walmart without hitting a band you know what i mean like that's just, <laughs> you know somebody's either part of something or looking for something or um, you know, and there's and there's all types. I mean, and you got you got places like uh, my boy Jason Curtis running Five Star Dive Bar, dude. Always having shows, man. You know, um, um, uh, Cheers uh, just renovating, and uh, and they're having shows now. Like, there's, it's it's I don't know, it's it's super cool to be a part of a community like that. But it's funny because everybody's always complaining about you know how good or how bad and it's like dude just focus on you don't worry about them don't worry about how they do things focus on your own and, right. and you know kick cast and take names dude um, yeah I can't, who was it locally it was it not in this moment it was uh man i can't remember there's been so many local bands here that have focused on themselves and gotten themselves with production wise and uh uh you know just uh, uh marketing to a point right. where they aren't here anymore because they can't be because they have to be uh in in, in bigger venues you know that's just right. the way it is bigger bigger venues are bringing them in and um yeah it's it's, it's really not hard to, to jump off from from being a local to to doing what you want to do as far as it goes in music i don't think in this area like i said uh we're right in the middle of everything you know yep. detroit chicago indianapolis you know i mean you can uh you know shoot uh, grand rapids fort wayne you know i mean they're, they're all within driving distance and they're all, you know, doable, doable uh, venues. You know, so. Yeah. And if, if there's something you're looking for, it's going to be in one of those spots. And there's like a showgirls and everyone, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. There's so many of those in Fort Wayne. If you ever make it over there to check it out, you know, one, like, three, seven three, or three, ten. Three, how many you guys got? <laughs> You know, in all my years, I've only ever been to one of those. Can you believe that? And the one that I oh, went to man, closed down. For my for my son's 18th birthday, we took him up to uh, K-Zoo and watched midget wrestling. <laughs> 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 and he got a couple of lap dances and uh, ended up taking him backstage and put him up on stage during the uh, during the, the wrestling show. It was Micromania. And, uh, you know, and it's funny because he's just awkward as hell you know what i mean like here his dad's like let's go to this trip club come on <laughs> yeah yeah it's like uh no 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 but then and, and then when you like, leave it's like that was the greatest night of my yeah, life yeah and it was like you know you know like six of my buddies and him you know what i mean so right he was constantly giving him grief about stuff and whatnot but, yeah, it, uh, it was, i know I, I know the feeling because uh when gunner turned 21 we were in New Orleans. Oh, and, fantastic. Yeah. And we ended up in a strip club in there. At, you know, his first time in a strip club, 21 years old, three days. He was three days old, is what I kept telling everybody. You know, he's only three days after his 21st. <laughs> and putting him in the, in the, in uh, what we like to call pervert row. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was just an amazing experience for me as a father. <laughs> <laughs> were, you putting, were you putting dollars on his head? Uh, it just brought that's put just tapping him over his shoulder. Here you go, buddy. Here you go, buddy. Here you go. The best part of it was is that his mom was sitting right next to him. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> and my and my niece was on the other side of him, and her and her now husband. Um, oh. Yeah. oh my God, what a great experience just to yeah, have. Awesome. See what I'm saying with the family, man. Man, that's great. I'll have that and that support. You go get that left hand son. Yeah, that's right. Get it. Get it. <laughs> amazing amazing oh, so, hey dog what yeah. uh what you got going on for the future uh oh. obviously michiana uh party service is, is still going you'll still be doing some of that i'm assuming you're not working with that every weekend just uh no, it's, yeah it's, it's it's a periodic thing like i said I, I don't advertise i'm sure if i advertise and watch the shows and that kind of thing you know i, I get a bigger turnout but you know i get uh i get quality clients because it's word of mouth you know what i mean you know yep. um 
the, the, the best part about that is no one's going to, you know, look at somebody and be like, uh, well, you're a piece of trash. Let me tell you about my friend who's awesome. You know, like, gonna yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least I don't think so. I don't think anybody hates me at this point, man. You never know, though. But uh, no. So, so yeah. So, you know, I'm doing that. Um, I there's some kind of app somebody was telling me about where you could put your voice work or singing or whatever the heck on it and then add it to a website. And if people like it, they buy it or whatever the heck, you know what I mean? I mean, it's, right on. It's, it's every, every musician's website now, but it's specifically uh, geared towards like voice, you know what I mean? Right what goes. And I was thinking about doing that, but um, right now I'm renting and renting is kicking my ass. Um, you know, it's, I, I'm paying, you know, at least three or four times more, you know, than if I would have a mortgage on this thing and it's, it's nuts. So, uh, so right now, you know, we're, we're kind of in limbo as far as where we're going to live or, you know, we're still going to be in the area. Um, but, uh, as soon as we can figure that out, that's when things will start changing for me voice wise, because I really want to get back into it, you know, uh, before I lose it, man, because like I said, I talk a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> um no i i uh i I agree with you i think you got a great voice for for the voiceover work and and i know that when you were with me at at golden image radio you had a demo and you were kind of trying to play it out and try to get it out there and and i still have that thing man but now you know i I, I listen to it i'm like that guy sounds like he's 12 yeah (laughs) (laughs) well you were pretty damn young back then (laughs) yeah (laughs) <laughs> yeah. at least at least 20 20 years ago or something like that. oh my yeah well let's see golden image radio went off the air what 13 years ago i think mm-hmm. give or take 10 13 somewhere in there so uh yeah, yeah think about that for a minute just put that in perspective good lord but <laughs> <laughs> yeah we gotta oh, love it we gotta uh, love it well good i'm i i want to see you get back into the voice work uh oh, yeah. you, i know yeah, you get to I know you got the stuff to do it. I think what I, what, what I'm what I'm going to try and do is get into the uh, uh, books as far as audio books. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. I uh, I love reading to my kids and then you know making the voices and that kind of thing. And, and I've heard a few like you know you know since I drive everywhere from my from my straight job, I've heard a few uh, audio books where I'm like, this book is good, but the person reading it just sucked. Right. But, like where did they get this like somebody was like no 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 oh oh his voice <laughs> is golden like, no, no there's no after me man you picked the first dude on the list it was like that's fine <laughs> this is the cheapest one right here just take him we'll do yeah. that uh, or somebody's friend of a friend or something like that <laughs> man, you get into that because it's you know and documentaries or whatever the heck man you know right I was uh, I was doing voice work while I was with the Bear at the uh, College Football Hall of Fame, and I did a lot of their uh, I did their induction ceremony. I was the voice of God for that, for the ESPN uh, induction ceremony, and then I also did uh, voice work for their uh, uh, what, the, what the heck did I call them uh, <sighs> exhibits? Oh, right on. So, so they you know they have some running back whatever that'd be 1968 blah blah blah. <laughs> You know, yeah. right, it was, right. It was, it was unsolved mysteries and shit. <laughs> you know, that is the one place that I did not make it to. I you I know. always wanted to go, but I never made it there. And the, it you was know, cool. it's gone. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, you know, I I actually get into uh, what the where, where the hell did it move to? It's someplace in the middle of Ohio or whatever the heck, man. Yeah, oh, no, that's the pro, that's the pro football hall of fame. Pro. Um, I think right. Yeah, no, no, you're 100. Uh, uh, the pro football is in Canton, Ohio. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to uh, think because I remember, I remember when they moved it, they made the announcement where it was going, but I, well, I, I don't remember <laughs> what it was. But, uh, but you know, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was super cool. And you know, I, uh, uh, Richard, I can't remember his last name, man, but <laughs> I have a problem with names. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, Jeremy. <laughs> Richard was their their uh, their production man for uh, for all their exhibits and whatnot, and uh, he would call me in, set me in front of a mic, hand me the script. I would read it once, and he'd be like, "All right, you're good." You know, it was the easiest <laughs> job. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know that. I know that if I did it, I'd overthink it and I'd mess up words. How do you mess up the word and? Really, come on, dude, you got this. Right, and, uh, and that's uh, that's another thing. When I do the uh, uh, the walk to end Alzheimer's, I have a script there too. So, you know, I, what, what I tend to do is when I tend to look at something that I'm going to 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 talk about, I underline words that are either difficult or weird or, you know, or there's like a transition, I'll put a slash. Like I have my own uh, code or whatever, as far as reading goes, you know? Right. And, uh, and you know, sometimes I'll rewrite it just, just for the heck of it, man. And, but, uh, you know, I, I gotta tell you, you know, every, every client I've had, every, every piece of production I've done has been for some decent people. And, uh, you know, I've never, never really had that. Uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes, I think was the worst. Because I don't know if you heard the Sherlock Holmes best built manufacturing on the planet or whatever, uh, you know, and and they wanted me to, to keep getting louder. I was like, Sherlock Holmes, best built manufacturing homes on the planet. They'd be like, OK, can we do it louder? Sherlock Holmes, the best built, you know, and I, you know and I'm screaming at everybody. And right. it's, and it's on at like 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> they want to they want to wake you up. <laughs> oh my god, man, it was nuts. I ended up redoing the thing like it took like three or four weeks, and I ended up redoing it like five times before it before they got it right. Then even when I wasn't at the fair, I would still hear that damn commercial. <laughs> <laughs> it's still just bouncing around in your head. Yeah, That's funny. no, they they still played it, man. It oh, really? Funny. Yeah. Oh my god. Hey, that's me. I, they, I don't want you to know that's me, but that's me. <laughs> that's all right. Everybody, that's not a dog, but it's him. <laughs> it was me there. Uh, another piece of production that was cool was for Deal Vickers Cutlery and Elkhart. I ended up doing this Arnold Schwarzenegger thing, right? You know, so I had the Conan Barbarian music in the background and like you know, hammer hitting an anvil. It was so awesome. Man. <laughs> I had so much fun that. But, yeah. so I was listening to uh, I, I can't and I don't remember which one it was. Uh, it was it, it was it might have been one of uh, Josh Toro's bands had come down um, uh, to the studio. I, I and I don't remember if it was or not. But uh, you know, here I am. We're doing the interview, and I'm working on. I was like, I'm working on my best walk-in, you know, I'm trying to do Christopher walk-in <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden the phone rings. And now remember, I'm listening to this because I haven't heard it in 10 years. I'm listening yeah. to this like, oh, we had the phones up by now. Well, that's pretty cool. And then it comes on and I hear, Jeremy, you can't do me. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. It's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and you went on for i don't know two or three minutes and i you know i drive a lot for my job so that's where i was listening i damn near wrecked the transit van laughing my ass off going yeah that was a dog yeah i know exactly who that was but yeah you can't do me <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's funny man i'm you know i'm not like I'm not like comedians on Bob and Tom where I can just switch into it, man. It takes me like a little bit, you know, to put it together. But man, yeah, I, and and you you can blame that on Tim because Tim and I would would walking it up all the time, man. We're right, big fiction fans, and uh, you know, just follow that dude around. And he's he's I don't know, he's such a such a great character of a person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, man, that's that's cool. <laughs> I, I, uh, so yeah hey speaking of being in my basement uh you know soco promo has been there a couple of times mm -hmm. uh, you know my my boy andrew carlin he used to own cheers back in the day with his wife and then uh you know he moved on to better bigger and better things now he's looking to be like a, a dean of students man like like this this guy <laughs> I'm, I'm not lying man like he, he went from uh yeah he became a teacher and then ended up being you know now he's a, a science uh what the heck was it, man? He was uh, part of the science and agriculture um, lead or something like that, as far as uh, uh, teachers go or whatever the heck, man. And I, I think he became vice principal at one point, man. Now he's looking to do dean. Just awesome, you know. To That's that, pretty that amazing. Guy, from being a ground pounder marine to you know making an impact not only uh, uh, musically. I mean, they're still in the band too. Um, right. They got a, a couple of bands out there, but Soco Promo is coming together. Um, late february i do believe if i I'd man if i could i'd look on my phone but you can see it on my uh facebook page um some of my events or whatever uh or you could look at the marine corps league number 95 in south bend um there's a there's a big falling out between um between the the, the two started it man and 
and they, they come back together and they're bringing everybody from their past. So anybody who's filled in for them, you know, or right. played with them in the past is coming back. Fruit pie, you know, no. uh, man. Um, yeah. So it's uh, it's 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 nice, man. And, and and they're having it at the Marine Corps League, which is great because the Marine Corps League for for a while was just having like uh, Saturday night church revivals and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Like yeah, okay. Are you guys trying to make money here? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think you understand. Yeah, this is not the direction you want to go. Uh, yeah. When Mike Mike come down, uh, uh, him and his son come down. Uh, I don't even remember exactly when it was, but uh, he was talking. He was talking behind the scenes about the a possible Soco reunion and and uh, yeah. So I'm happy that they, they got, got it. They got, I ha- I'm glad they got it worked out. I'm glad they're back together and. Uh, uh, uh drew was always amazing to me and the guilt for crew uh you know when we did cheers he you know was he, he liked us and you know he he put us in there so i you know drew was always great to us and we always loved drew for everything he did so um, yeah, you know i broke that dude's nose once <laughs> yeah yeah so so this is this is just after i was a dog at some point and soco promo was playing at cj's pub but it wasn't where CJ's is now. It was across the street. And, uh, you know, they're uh, they're getting ready to come up. And I'm like, I get up there. And I'm like, hey, guys, how's it going? I'm A-Dog. And this is how you know when you've hit rock bottom. Somebody in the back was like, who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I've been there, done that. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, okay, all right. It's time for me to stop introducing myself as A-Dog. From now right, on. right. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah man it was a wild turkey night and i uh i don't know what what happened but i was trying to knock some sense into him uh like literally <laughs> <laughs> i ended up giving him a headbutt right to the face man now so i had to come down a little bit because he's a little shorter than i am so come to find out years later the dude had breathing problems couldn't sleep right had to have his nose uh had surgery on his nose never told me <laughs> not once i didn't even know you know nothing on facebook nothing to say nobody said anything to anybody and uh years later i was at his birthday party at his house and his wife's like well you know he broke his nose and i said what what win you know right uh, and just uh you know <laughs> the caliber of this guy to understand that i wasn't trying to kick his ass or be a dick to him I was just trying to help him out. My head <laughs> him in the face. <laughs> I can see where that's helpful. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, the good, the good old days, right? Yeah, and you know, I, you know, it's it's one of those things. Where I haven't forgiven myself for it yet. I got a buddy Ed that ended up uh, uh, cutting my hand open in the Marine Corps, and uh, you know, by accident, we were just doing some hand-to-hand combat moves drunk <laughs> <laughs> and he's every once in a while he'll he'll you know we'll meet new people and he's like yeah i cut this dude's hand over you know <laughs> yeah, it's okay man don't worry about it <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> yeah man i am i am i am super stoked they're coming back together uh we ended up uh when he had the meeting down there with uh a guy named moody who, who runs the shows um and they're going to be doing more shows which is really cool but uh yeah, I was down there. I had a few beers with him, you know, and, and uh, talked to him and Remy. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, so uh, yeah, good times, man. Yeah. What else, what else you got going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, what else? What else is going on? <laughs> I, I got nothing, man. I'm just trying to maintain this whole podcasting world that I'm working on, and that's all I'm doing. Uh, so I've we- been, uh, Sorry, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, we did a show a few weeks ago uh, at a coffee house just for shits and giggles because she was doing a grain reopening and and she asked us to do it. So other than awesome. that, I'm just uh, I'm just sitting here, man. I got this this chair in my butt or like two two peas in a pod now. <laughs> so, so how was the coffee house, man? Was it like uh, was it like was everybody like jacked up? You know? <laughs> oh, you, yeah. You, you know, you know when you you. You take alcohol and you put it in a person, and uh, you know how they act. Now, just yeah. multiply that times ten when you put caffeine to a person. And yeah. Uh, yeah. No. no, man, it was a great time. We had uh, uh, a lot of the Golden Mojo Entertainment family was there. Uh, a lot of the 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 people who work on the podcast were there, and it was just a really nice time. You know, 
some people, fans, people uh, that listen to our podcast actually come out and was hanging out with us, which awesome. that is something that I just, I, I still can't quite, quite get used to yet is meeting people that go like, oh, I love you on the podcast. It's like, You're like you've heard it. You listen <laughs> to, you listen to the cousin Curdundum and you know that I would bang my cousin if it was Christine Aguilar, <laughs> you know, these things. <laughs> <laughs> oh fantastic <man. laughs> oh yeah it's pretty it's pretty wonderful so yeah we're we're working here you know obviously um you know uh, uh all three of the kids are now married uh skyler has uh two kids and uh yeah. you know uh gunner and his wife just passed a year in october uh my daughter just got married in october i married all three of them off in a year and, so. and not one of them called me up to be a dj huh that you know, you know who the DJ was. <laughs> you know who the DJ was, dear old dad. Not only did he officiate the wedding, but he DJed. Oh man! Uh, except, you, except my daughter, I, I officiated her wedding, but she hired a DJ um, from one of those bridal expos. Yeah. Worst mistake ever. Worst yeah. mistake ever. They yeah, were. I, I bet those up plates were. Uh, you had to charge charge for them, huh? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, well, the, the, the they did a bunch of discounts, and she got it for a reasonable price. But he was horrible. I mean, oh, he's a horrible DJ. And it was one of those things in that they, and we put this out in the episode we did on the, on, on her wedding, but he kept playing the same songs over again. Because so wait, a minute, they, wait, a minute, wait a minute. You were doing the podcast at her wedding. Uh, well, kind of, we did. <laughs> <laughs> That's dedication. <laughs> we actually did the night before we recorded the night before in our, in our cabin, we recorded the day of I did an interview with the owners of the of the um, bed and breakfast. Super nice people. So like two hours before I was supposed to get ready to uh, to go do my first look on my daughter. I'm in here with the podcast and I'm interviewing the couple that own the place. <laughs> and then uh, we did another one a week later um, about the wedding. And we, we, you know, we just, uh, just went over all the things that we did, but yeah, we covered, we covered every angle of that motherfucker. Let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> Man, hey, that's so cool, dude. Take it where you can get it. We had some good, uh, uh, Bonnie and Mike from the lighthouse lodge down in Monticello. I mean, if you ever, if you, you guys ever want to do a nice little getaway, rent a cabin, it's a beautiful piece of property right on Lake Monticello. That sounds like uh, a good idea. Oh, it is amazing. It's and it's uh, you know it's quiet. It's a little retro, okay. but okay, uh, so 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 hot tub. No, no hot tub. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry, bro. Sorry, bro. I know that might be a, that might be a deal breaker. There is no hot oh, tub. Man. So yeah, so uh, <laughs> so what I've been what I've been trying to do is uh, friend anybody who has twenty or more friends on Facebook. Okay. You know I am so so yeah so anybody. Because, I mean, you know, if somebody sends you a friend request and you only know, like, a couple of people, and you know, you're going to be like, who are you, right? Right. You know, if you know 20 or more people, you'd be like, oh, of course they're my friend because they're friends with, you know, everybody else I know. So, right. Which is kind of cool. So, you know, what I've been trying to do is be less of a dick on Facebook <laughs> because I'm super, you know me, I'm, I am I am, was super opinionated and wanted everybody to know my business. And, and here's the right way you do things. Right. And, you know you don't need to live that way dude focus on what's in front of you what you can take care of i was getting so stressed out about politics and bullshit and stuff that doesn't even matter to me personally you know right. and uh and seeing everybody else and and then and then what i tried to do is was uh was uh, make fun of all the bullies right i make sure i put a freaking exclamation period whatever you know on the statement and and that's just stupid too you know you, you, it takes a lot less energy to be nice and to be relaxed and just not care about anything else, but what's in front of you and what you can, what you can help with. You know what I mean? Yep. So, uh, so I'm doing that and I have a bunch more friends. Now I have like two grand or something like that. So, and a lot of them are musicians and a lot of them are, you know, military and a lot of them are, uh, you know, uh, family folks and that kind of thing. So it's really nice to have that base of, you know, not everybody's like me, everybody's different but i right. can go ahead and share a band with somebody or put it out there on my stuff and have all these people looking at it you know what i mean yep so so that's that's what i've been doing and i'm trying to uh you know the more friends i pick up the more band mates there are the more shows that are being run so that's what i'm trying to do is is uh, uh you know pace those up 
as much as I can for, you know, for, for friends of mine and that kind of a thing. And, and, right. you know, get people out to the show. Uh, I know, I, have you ever heard of the boogie? Uh, is that the, is that the motorcycle rally? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I guess for a while it kind of got stagnant and, uh, now this dude is like, you know what, we're done with that. We're going to start kicking ass, taking names. So, uh, uh, there's going to be another boogie coming up this year and I guess they're revamping it. So that's cool. Nice. Um, you know, like, uh, like, you know, my, my buddies from SoCo promo getting their stuff going and, uh, you know, we're trying to try to post all that. But the cool thing about, uh, about friending people is that sometimes, you know, you get that one person that messages you back and says like, Hey, how's it going? Uh, how would you feel about a massage with a happy ending? And you're like, <laughs> let, let me talk to the wife. Uh, you know, I, I got the rates and everything. And I'm like, wow, I'm only I'm 46 years old and finally get proposition like that on Facebook. It's about time, right? Milestone. All I had to do is start sending random people. It's That's great. right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although the wife said no, but you know, other than that, you know, it's all good. She hasn't said anything yet, man. Like she's been really silent about it. So I asked her if she has couples massage. You know, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> Can we? It's for like thirty minutes, man. You can't beat that. That's good no. price. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like seventeen hundred for the whole night. So yeah. Oh, that's, that's damn. Not happen, man, that, no, I don't have that. Yeah, that's gonna have to. <laughs> we're gonna have to. <laughs> I, oh man! I just paid for my chief season tickets. I don't have that money no more. Oh yeah, jeez, dude, nice. <laughs> and I, I bet that was a pretty funny. Uh, but it's worth it. We get to go out there and uh, once again the same the same deal. What you were just talking about. Uh, yeah. We go out there. We tailgate. We meet people. Um, you know, you either friend them or you you know on Facebook or just you know you swap emails or stuff like that. Just uh. I like to say 76,000 of my uh, closest friends. We're just hanging out with them. You know, we're all wearing <laughs> red. We're all, we're all yelling for the same thing. So, uh, but yeah, it's the same, it's uh, the same premise, just on a different, on a different scale, you know, uh, yeah. I'm not, it's not with them in my hand. So we're, you are physically walking up to them and talking to people. We do interviews with them, you know, a little quick interview so we can have it on our other podcast and, and yeah, it's just an amazing time. So, That's fun cool yeah. yeah it's just good stuff so hey dog i need to i need to get out of here i need to let you go i appreciate oh my god i appreciate your time and man it is so good to see you and i'm so happy that things are going good and uh it's good to hear you're involved in all of these different uh charity pro uh, projects and and stuff like that man that is amazing and it's fun to do dude it really it really is you know it's it's one of those things where it gets gets you the warm fuzzy dude you know, yeah. and, and and you're you're not going to get that being a dick, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to keep getting asked to come back anyway. <laughs> That's true. Right? <laughs> well, one thing before you let me go, I, I don't know if you got this on there, but I wanted to say what's up to my boys at Severed Head Shop. Yeah, uh, these guys are metal as hell, and they're good folks. And and I want to show you the the Dick Fulu picture here. <laughs> Dick Fulu with penises hanging off his mouth. It's fantastic. Man. Those are guys are great. But, uh, yeah, so <laughs> or cock I don't know, <laughs> whatever you prefer. <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, man, uh, uh, a great band, and then of course, you know, my boys at Soko Promo and my boy T Bone, and uh, uh, my boy Ed, my boy Ed, who actually runs this uh, this thing called uh, uh, was it? It's a, a coven, it's a uh, it's it's a coven boutique, uh, oh. shop. Uh, it's it's a witch's thing. What the heck is it, man? It's yeah, coven. Yeah. If you say it's a witch's thing, it'd be a coven, right? Yeah, it's a coven, but it's but it's called oh, man, I can't believe the freaking the uh the title's eluding me right now, man. It's uh the Crystal Coven Boutique. That's it. Okay. So Ed Seawack, Crystal Coven Boutique, they have shows and they sell crystals and and uh you know tapestries and all that kind of stuff too. But he's the guy who purchased the severed head shop uh Cockfulu shirt. So Nice. Uh, just quickly, you know, what's up to my boy? He and I actually served in Okinawa uh, back in 1997 together, dude, and just been bros ever since. Same dude to cut up my hand. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice. That is a bro. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you very much for having me, dude. I, I love this, and I, I'd love to be, you know, a part of something in the future. If you ever need any voice work or whatever, let me know, and I'll be happy to help out in any way I can. Oh, my man, I appreciate it so, so much. You don't even know. Hey, uh, give Tim a big wet kiss for me and uh, maybe stick a stick a finger in his ear and tell him I said hi. I will do, man. All right. Hey, 
Rock hey, on, dog. Yourself, I love you, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. And I'll see you later. Oh, I finally got a crap. Rock on. Oh! Wow. Don't, no, no.